Porto Alegre, capital of Rio Grande do Sul, is Brazil's second most important inland port. Its 1.3 million citizens come from a wide variety of backgrounds. With the fastest growing economy in Brazil, the state of Rio Grande do Sul attracts immigrants from many other poorer regions of the country who come in search of work and a better future. Rio Grandenses are famous for their entrepreneurial skills. They're known as gauchos because, at least initially, the basis of their wealth was cattle ranching. Gaucho traditions, from accordion music and baggy pants to drinking mate, are proudly maintained. Rio Grande do Sul has a history of fierce independence, including a breakaway movement to form a separate nation. The region was settled by waves of German and Italian immigrants, including in the 20th century many anarchists, sowing the seeds of community activism. In Porto Alegre, even the homeless have their own pressure group. So perhaps it's not surprising that Porto Alegre is also the birthplace of an extraordinary experiment in direct democracy. It's known as participatory budgeting. It's been copied in various forms in almost a hundred other Brazilian cities today. Tasso Genro is Porto Alegre's mayor. It's his second term of office since 1989, when a popular front of progressive parties won the municipal elections and introduced the participatory budgeting scheme. Over the last 13 years, the scheme has been continuously added to and improved. The first thing the population votes on is the internal budget, the salaries and the running costs of the town hall machine. Of course, voting on salaries and running costs is really more or less a formality, because they are fixed by law. Where the arguments begin is over the money set aside for investment, about 15 to 20 percent of our budget, depending on the year, to be used for new works and special services linked to them. Competition for this money is fierce within the community because we receive about 1,300 demands each year and can only satisfy between 300 and 350 of them. This is the story of three of the people who became involved in the Porto Alegre experiment. Their lives and neighborhoods have been profoundly changed by the experience. Rolf Naumann often speaks German at home with his wife and ecologist daughter. Now retired, he devotes much of his energy to worrying about the city's transport system. Angelica Marinha is a single mother who fought to improve conditions in her shantytown. She's moved through the ranks of the budget process, from local delegate to her present job as political organizer. Mali Medeiros was born in poverty and brought up four daughters and an adopted son mainly on her own. Mali is the driving force behind the environmental education or rubbish recycling center and has become the uncrowned queen of Villa Pinto. This is Villa Pinto one of Porto Alegre's poorest neighborhoods, and until recently, one of its most violent. In 1994, its main economy was drug dealing. Nobody dared go out after 7 p.m. 51 rapes were reported that year. Six years later, a dramatic change had taken place. There were no recorded rapes in the year 2000, and things were a great deal more peaceful. This was mainly thanks to a thriving rubbish recycling center which offers